Good evening. It's nice to see standing room only. Uh, it goes to show how many people care about the students and the Brockton Public Schools. So I'd like to welcome everyone, um, especially the parents who are here with their children. We really appreciate your support. We really appreciate you attending. We, um, you know, we're all in this together. And um, without the parents, we basically, um, you know, would be nowhere. So we really do appreciate everything that you do for us. Um, I also would like to thank all of the employees of the Brockton Public School who are in attendance and who have helped out um, put, to put this evening together. Um, these people give a lot of themselves. They, uh, they care about their profession. They care about all of our children. And um, that's what makes the Brockton Public School so special. I would also like to um, introduce and uh, give a shout out to our elected officials who are also in attendance. We have State Senator Michael Brady. We have... <laughs> I refer to our state senator as the governor. He's, uh, he's our local governor, Mike Brady. Um, we also have in attendance Representative Claire Cronin. Representative Cronin. We also have in attendance Representative Jerry Cassidy. Uh, we also have in attendance Representative Michelle Dubois. Uh, from the City Council, I know I, I had spoken to and seen earlier Jack Lally. Uh, Ann Beauregard. Bob Sullivan, and um, I have the privilege of serving with several very good people on the school committee. Uh, in attendance tonight is Mark Diagostino, Brett Gormley, Lisa Plant, Tim Sullivan. And we also have uh, doing double duty, Mark Lindy from Southeastern. Um, is there anyone that I forgot? I don't think so. Okay, excellent. All right, so basically, what are we here for tonight? Well, what we're here for is we're here for our students and we're here for our children. We, um, you know, we basically have heard and seen uh, what's happening with our budget and um, it's basically totally unacceptable in my opinion and in the opinion of all of us here together. Um, what we need to do is we need to take things a step further. We have a um, state delegation who's doing everything they can for us and who uh, are speaking on our behalf on Beacon Hill but they can't do it alone. They need us to help them. We need to go up to Beacon Hill and we need to make our voices heard. So. Tonight we're going to talk about the different parts to advocacy, um, the inequity that this city, as the fourth largest school district in the state, a school district that is so unique. As you can see, when you look around this room, you basically see, you know, smiles and faces of all different types. And guess what? We are a very unique melting pot. The city of Brockton is a very unique place. and. Um, we should all be privileged to live here together. Um, you know, this, this has gone on since my childhood. You know, I grew up here in Brockton, and we were, and Brockton was always a city of immigrants. The only thing that's changed are the different places that people come from, but we're, we're all here together, and we all get along, and we have a very unique community, and we also have a very unique and special school system, which we all value, and we all know uh, that the people working in this system get the job done. But in order to get the job done, we need to be treated fairly. We need to have the financial support that um, you know isn't over the top. We're just talking about satisfactory and reasonable in order to continue to get the job done. And we cannot get the job done 
if we're going to receive year after year after year basically the same amount of money um, when we all know that the cost of things go up. So we need to work together. We need to basically put a plan in action. And there's going to be some very good and special people speaking this evening who will tell, tell you where we're at and how we're going to get there. So um, the first person I'm very privileged to introduce for this evening is Superintendent Kathleen Smith. Good evening, and I can't tell you how proud I am to not only be your superintendent of schools, but to have been a faculty member, a teacher for over 40 years in the district that I love. Thank you. I have to tell you, I feel like I've been down this road before, because Brockton has certainly, in those 40 years, has had its ups and downs. We've had times when money was so plentiful. I was in jobs in the community school office and we didn't know what to do with the extra money. We did summer programs, we did after school programs, we did weekend programs, we did family programs and it was great. It was a great time, it was a great economy. I've also been here in the early 80s when those of you can remember Prop 2.5 came in and it was devastating. It was devastating to our school district to our teachers, our firefighters, our police, our very way of life in Brockton. And what did we do? We struggled as a district, but we continued to maintain what I call excellence. And what we did back then was we went out and we were one of the first ones. We were the lead plaintiff in what started as the Webby versus Dukakis case eventually became the McDuffie case, which brought in what they called in the early 90s ed reform. And that righted Brockton ship at the time. It said that every child deserves equity in education, an equal education, and an opportunity that should be had by every child sitting in front of you this evening. So what brings me here tonight? And Mr. Minicello said it best. I need you, we need you because there truly is strength in numbers. So whether you're here tonight as a parent or a community member or an elected official, when you leave here, I want you to go out and find 10 more people to talk to, 20 more people to talk to, so that our message is carrying, not only from the State House, but all the way to make sure that we are getting the proper funding in the Brockton Public Schools. <laughs> And I have to also echo for one minute what Mr. Minicello said. I am so proud to serve with your school committee as superintendent. They have been working all year long on watching our budgetary situation because we do rely very heavily on state funding along with some of our city funding. And that is what I'll talk to you about this evening. But they have worked hours after hours, retreats on Saturdays, not just those school committee meetings that you see televised subcommittee meetings, really having difficult, respectful conversation about what we're going to do to make sure your children get the education they deserve. And when you hear about our state officials, we have been to so many meetings, not only with them, but also with their elected senators, representatives, speaker of the house, chairpersons of ways and means committee, state auditor. We have been meeting with all of these people to tell our story. To tell you the story is very complicated. I told you I've been in the district 40 years and I continue to try to understand what this budget is all about and what the formula is all about. But this is what I will tell you this evening. We lost this year over $5 million to school choice and charter. Whatever you believe in, that isn't okay to have $5 million less for 18,000 children that I have in the Brockton Public Schools today. That's not okay. It isn't okay that two years ago, we counted as part of our foundation formula, children living in poverty. And our number was over 9,000 children that we received additional funding for. Last year, because of a change in the formula, all of a sudden, over 7,000 students dropped off our rolls, which left us with about 4,300 students that were not counted this year. 
4,300 students that are still sitting in front of us and have not been counted, and that's a total of over $6 million. This is not okay. So I'm here tonight, though, to talk to you about what we want as a city. The one thing that you expect from us is educational excellence. And when you were in that other room, we wanted you to see tonight all the academics that go on from some of our alternative programs, what you saw was excellence from those students. To many of our little programs from the UNIDOS, our two-way program, to JROTC, to science fairs, to social studies fairs, to all of the things that make us the district that we are. When we're talking with the school committee, this is what we hear. International baccalaureate program, we can't do without that. Our children need that program. Our children need AP classes. Our children need drama. Our children need band. Our children need athletics. Our children need after school. Our children need extracurricula. Our children need summer programs. You're darn right they do. Our children deserve everything. <laughs> everything that students get throughout the state. Now let me talk to you about your schools. Tonight, please, the principals that are here, please stand up. I want a big round of applause for your principals. Because they're here tonight. And those are the people that you have contact with day in and day out. And just their presence tonight is telling you how much we need to come together as a community to support our children. And I have a number of speakers lined up. Speakers that you will hear them talk about the children that they shepherd every day to make sure, and this needs a big round of applause, I want you to hear this for a minute. Your Brockton High School, 4,300 students here every day. They are a level one high school, the best in the state. Your middle schools, just about every one of them a level two and level one middle schools, always making progress. We have level one and level two elementary schools and that is the foundation that is built as they move up, as they close that achievement cap, and as they achieve. They are the best in the state, the best district in the state. I will tell you for those parents out there, and you know it, that are for extra services, they come far and wide to see our bilingual program and to look at our best practices, to watch our children achieve. Some that come in not speaking a word of the English language. And when they leave, they are number one in the class sometimes. They're on the National Honor Society. They're getting John and Abigail Adams scholarships because of the foundation that is set in your bilingual department. A round of applause. Your special education department. There isn't a service out there that we do not offer to these students. We make sure that they're inclusive. I have to tell you a heartwarming story. Last Thursday evening, I went to the Brockton High School Senior Prom at uh, Gillette Stadium, uh, just a wonderful venue. Over 900 of our kids absolutely dressed beautifully, having a wonderful, memorable evening, and those are memories you know that'll last a lifetime. And in the middle of that, we are special needs students also taking part from Brockton High. They were, they were included, they were having a ball, they were out on that dance floor before anybody else. And that's what it's about here. Everybody is included, everybody has an opportunity to succeed. So tonight, I'm going to ask two things from you. It isn't just to get you excited, and I need to see throughout this city, I need to see bumper stickers on your car that say, Save Our Schools, Brockton Kids Count. I need to see those lawn signs on your lawn, your neighbor's lawn, you know, your grandmother's lawn. Everybody in Brockton needs to have those signs far and wide to get our message out there. And what we need is advocacy. 
And what does that mean? It doesn't mean that we just leave here tonight. I've thought about this long and hard. And the advocacy isn't just about signing a petition. We need to come together as a community and we need to solve this problem. And our elected officials will talk to you again about the strains on our city budget and that is true. The mayor and I, the mayor is at a finance committee meeting. He and I have had long conversations. He has been there at my side advocating with every one of the groups I told you, whether it's the state auditor, our senators, our representatives, again, who are doing yeoman's work. So we're doing this together, but this is what I'm asking you as a community. We need a group of you from, I'm talking wards one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Community members coming together with some of our elected officials to truly talk about what happened in the 1980s was this community came together and said no more. We need to come up with a solution. And that's what the city of Brockton needs to do and we need to start it. I need people to sign up to let us know what ward that you're living in and that you are willing to commit for this year, starting now, that we get a group together and we talk about what we need. Do we need to get a ballot question on there that talks about proper funding for our city? Because I believe in you. When it came to, again, bringing up a family, my husband and I have lived in Brockton for 35 years. Our children attended the Brockton Public Schools. And when it came time to make those tough decisions that every one of you make, like you, we worked one, two, three jobs, whatever it took to make sure our kids had every advantage possible. I believe that you will do the same for our children in Brockton. Whether you have children in school, whether they're the future children, whether you're a homeowner, whether you're a senior citizen, it matters how we're educating these children. So what we're doing as a district is the right thing in providing the education we provide so that every child can achieve. We need you to have your voices. I need your brains. You know, we need to be a very strong advocacy because people will know what Brockton is all about. That's number one. Number two, I go before with my school department, the um, city council on June 9th. Yes, that is a Friday night. And that is the night that we go to defend our budget. And I do want you to know we have support certainly from our city council. And I thank them for all their efforts. But before that meeting that starts at 6.30, I want you out there with a rally cry out at city hall, not in the city council chambers, there's no room to move. But outside City Hall, they can hear your voices, they can see your signs, and I will set the table for what we've talked about tonight. So please, June 9th, Friday night, I need you there, and we'll begin our advocacy. Thank you. Okay, don't you love her energy? She's the best. Um, like the superintendent stated, um, what makes Brockton special? A well-rounded education that offers all the different components. We need a great academic experience, but what makes this city and what makes the school system so special for so many kids and keeps them motivated to come to school you know, we all know that you, we're all parents here. You got to give that carrot. How do you how do you get your student or your child to to do what you need them to do? There needs to be some motivation. Well, you know, we need to continue with the drama. When you walked in this room, did you see that artwork out in the hallway? That's beautiful. It's just beautiful. And do I need to tell anyone here about the music program at this school? I mean, it's off the charts. Like the superintendent said, this high school, this high school hums. This high school with a 4,000 plus student body um, is remarkable. It's a level one high school. It offers so much to so many of our kids. This high school, basically, when these kids graduate, 
they've been prepared in their elementary schools, they get to the middle school, they're well prepared there, and then they come here and they go off and they make us all proud. Well, they get it done at this high school. And I would um, love to introduce to you one of the finest principals in the state, Sharon Wolder. Good evening. How many of you have a student at Brockton High? So you've heard this voice. Good evening. This is Ms. Wolder, principal of Brockton High School. That's me, a very proud principal of Brockton High School. Yes, my first year, I did make the mistake of calling a kickoff time for the Super Bowl, but I thought I was more important than football. Apparently not. Uh, but let me just say how incredibly proud I am to be the principal of this school. How many of you graduated from Brockton High School? Now, how many of you graduated before MCAS was a requirement? Yeah. <laughs> Things changed after you left, I have to tell you. Uh, and part of the reason for me bringing that up is the accountability that we face at this school is incredible. We're a level one school with the state because of MCAS, because of our graduation rate, our low dropout rate, because of all of the work that we're able to do with students. That makes us a level one school. But we're also a nationally recognized school for academics and beyond. And you've heard some of the things that we are able to offer. And I heard the superintendent talk about choice. And I think people understand choice means choice. But when choice takes away opportunities somewhere else, it hurts. And that's what we're living right now. Uh, for the last four years, as I sat in this seat, every year I've had to sit down with newer teachers and hand them a notice that says, you won't have a job next year. Not because of your performance, not because you didn't do well, not because you don't love and care about our students, but because we can't afford to keep you here. That's a hard conversation to have with a new person. And some people think, well, you have to do it and it just shouldn't hurt. It hurts. And it speaks to them about who they are as educators and how we value education. It matters. And the first year I had to do it, I felt very confident. I thought, but we're going to get the funding and you'll be back. And we got them back. The second year I had to do it, I felt less confident. And I said, I, I can't assure you, but what I can do is support whatever decision you make next. Last year, I knew I couldn't be confident. And we were moving into a new schedule that demanded more of our students and demanded more of our faculty. And I worried because we had kids who had three directed academics in their schedule. We're a level one school. We're a nationally recognized school for academics. And we were telling kids, you might be sitting around for three hours a day. That's not what school is supposed to be. And as great as we are, and as much as I love our greatness and all the accolades and recognition we get for being great, I worry that people think, well, they're level one, they'll be all right. They're nationally recognized, they'll be all right. And things just keep getting taken away. Some of you have very young children, and those children will be here soon. And when they get here, we want to be able to provide for them the level of education that the 1,043 kids who are graduating Saturday got. We want them to be able to have access to all of the sports. We want them to have access to all of the arts. We want them, I don't want to have to say to them, yes, we kept IB, but we can't offer you Chinese enough for you to actually get an IB diploma, because that's what it meant. We kept the program, but we don't have the language teacher to teach the class. And so those are the kinds of things that we have to think about in terms of balancing and saying we are determined to make sure that not only were we level one, but we remain level one. That's important for you. That's important for this community. I live here. When I took a job here, I committed to living here. I never moved away. I'm still a Brocktonian. I'm still very much a part of this community, and I'm still very dedicated to this school system. And I am determined that we will continue to be able to provide the best education, a nationally recognized education, to the kids we currently have and to all of those little faces I see who will be here soon. But we can't do that without this community stepping up and demanding more. Demanding more of ourselves and demanding more from everyone who supports us to make sure 
that we don't just say used to be level one, used to be nationally recognized, and then we leave it there. Because if we expect them to be the people who design our future, we have to give them the education that they need so they can do that. So thank you for your time. We are talking about 43 teachers, two adjustment counselors, two guidance counselors, two instructional resource specialists, and an associate principal just at Brockton High. That has to change. Thank you. At some point, things get out of hand. How can you basically expect things to remain the same, the standards to remain the same when you're talking about letting go close to 50 some odd people, 50 some odd staff. That's a lot of people. Um, so we need to help Principal Wolder and uh, we will do that together. Um, like I mentioned before, the high school does wonderful work, but a child's education, a child's uh, school experience is based on basically building blocks. What happens to them in elementary school? What happens to them at middle school? And then of course, what happens to them in high school? Um, so tonight we have the privilege of a couple of principals who do very fine work uh, in the Brockton Public Schools. So I'd like to introduce Principal Stephen Shaw from the Hancock School. Uh, Principal Shaw is um, a, a person who is a Brocktonian. He's been part of this community his whole life. He um, has had different positions within the school district. So he um, has perspective from all sorts of different angles from the Brock in the Brock Brockton Public Schools. Um, so without further ado, I'd like to introduce my friend, Steve Shaw. He also wears great ties. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, and good evening. It is a privilege and an honor to be here with all of you this evening. In 1848, Horace Mann, the father of ed education and a contemporary of Thomas Jefferson, stated that education, then, beyond all other devices of human origin, is the greatest equalizer of conditions of men, the balance wheel of the social machinery. Horace Mann was born and raised right here in Massachusetts. He envisioned the fledgling republic to one day be a great society the greatest the world had ever known, an advanced democracy whose citizens would demonstrate civic virtues, shared responsibility, strong character, all in the name of social efficiency. He knew that in order to maintain a democracy, especially one as advanced as our own, its citizens must be literate, numerate, and educated. If Horace Mann were to look upon the state of education today, in the Brockton Public Schools, I wonder what he would say. I imagine he would be thrilled that his vision of a free and public education has taken root so strongly in the City of Champions, which has always been a welcoming oasis of opportunity for those seeking a better life for themselves and their families. The ever-evolving cultural landscaping of Brockton's neighborhoods reflect that universal quest for liberty, for, excuse me, for life liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. People always see in their children the opportunity of a brighter, more prosperous future, of becoming the best version of oneself, of accomplishing goals that one's heart is set on, all made possible with education, hard work, and grit. We in Brockton Public Schools see those same opportunities for our children, and we nourish that quest for knowledge and learning and becoming. Our school system is strong. Its, strong. its strength lies in its diversity of ideas, its people, its collective experiences, its students, families, teachers, staff, and administrators. Our strength lies in our robust desire to continue to see the children of Brockton be given the same educational opportunities and advances provided by other communities. Our strength is driven by this. We are not fearful of the challenging yet noble task of educating future generations, and we will not settle for second-rate quality. 
Thank you. Absolutely not. Across the district, our school's learning communities are working with this goal in mind. It is up to all of us to see that our students receive the highest quality of education for their future, for the future of our community and neighborhoods, for the future of the cities in our great nation. Let us all raise our voices together with this goal in mind. We will settle for nothing less. Thank you. That pretty much says it all, doesn't it? Um, we also have with us uh, another very special principal who basically um, lived the mantra that uh, Principal Shaw said, uh, we will settle for nothing less. Uh, the Huntington School, a few years back, uh, needed some TLC, needed a little tender loving care. And um, uh, a school-based plan was presented to the school committee and at the time, we did have some additional resources that we could commit in order to uh, provide some extra supports. Uh, extra support uh, came in the uh, form of extended learning time. Basically, uh, the school had a little extra learning time added to their day so that they could uh, give students a, a little more in English, a little more in math, a little more in different programs. Uh, and it basically uh, reaped rewards and reaped results. And um, uh, a big part of that um, was the input from the entire staff. Uh, the principal at the time was June Saba. She had a very motivated and um, committed staff, basically a staff who wanted more for their students and wouldn't settle for anything less than seeing these kids improve and have a, uh, a, a building block that got them to the next stage in their academic careers uh, for them to succeed, and succeed they did. And um, a big part of that success uh, is a person who's here with us tonight, and that's Principal Mary Beth O'Brien. Principal O'Brien, welcome. Good evening. It's an honor to be before you tonight, and I am humbled to be named the principal of the Huntington Elementary School. Not so much to be named principal so much, but to stand before you as a product of the Brockton Public Schools. I've thank you. born and raised in Brockton, a student, kindergarten through 12th grade, an attendee and graduate of the class of 2000 here at Brockton High School. I have continued my educational path and therefore committed all of my years in education to the Brockton Public Schools and could not imagine being anywhere else. And especially after listening to the passion of our superintendent and the principal before me and the colleagues that sit in this room, which many of whom are colleagues but my former teachers themselves. I am honored to be a Brockton Public School employee, a student, and certainly a champion for the cause for the Brockton Kids Count campaign. As the expanded learning time school, the first in Brockton, there are 2,009 expanded learning time schools in the nation. The Huntington Elementary School was number 22 in the state and the first in Brockton. We compete against a nation of public schools public schools that are working on initiatives that are very much similar to those that people compete against in countries abroad. I will say that one of the reasons we are so great is because of the family and community that we're surrounded by. And a great deal of that comes from the support and advocacy of people who spend a great deal of their time volunteering and investing in our students. In the time at the Huntington, as we've evolved as an expanded learning time school, most of our initiatives of are ones that have a microscope on them, but not so much to critique us, but more to showcase us. Out of all of the expanded learning time schools in Brockton, this year we've been named as a STEM ELT showcase school, where the National Center for Time on Learning and Empower Schools through Harvard is recognizing the great work of our educators, the professional development around STEM education and integrating technology into our classrooms, and most importantly, the outcomes and the innovative thinking of our students. 
in students from kindergarten through fifth grade. They are engaged in some of the most amazing work around the engineering design process. Ones that hopefully you'll see on YouTube very soon. We're still waiting for the final cuts of the video. Um, but if any of you have been part of the Huntington School, you know that it was built in 18, I always get the last two digits, 76, 87. I, I mixed them up. However, we just celebrated our 120th Huntington School Parade. There are so many traditions that the Huntington School has been noted for over time. Many of you sitting here have either marched in that parade, walked through the halls of the Huntington School, and can call yourself alumni who perhaps have played an instrument going all the way back to kindergarten. Um, and in that time, over that 120 years, although the oldest school in Brockton, we are the most innovative in practice, so much so that other schools now in Brockton, as ELT network schools in the state of Massachusetts, and further, the ELT network across the nation, are now looking at, modeling after, and showcasing. So please continue to invest in our children, because like we say at the Huntington School, that can trickle into every school in Brockton, every child, every day, soaring to success. Thank you. So there's a lot at stake, basically. There's a lot at stake. And, um, you know, when I, uh, when I went to the Brockton Public Schools, uh, it wasn't 120 years ago, but um, it, it, it was a little while ago. And, um, you know, at the time, we had a, an ELL population, English language learners, but it was nowhere um, at the point that it is today. Um, I think the percentage when I was here was probably around 10 uh, nine or ten percent, but today, um, like I said earlier, Brockton is a city of immigrants. The only difference is today, you know, where people are coming from. And today, um, there are a lot of people um, who are basically English language learners, and our population is somewhere around thirty-five percent. Um, and in, in the state, there was recently what's called the Chapter 70 Review Committee. And one of the important um, findings of that committee was that systems that, that have large ELL populations, uh, high poverty levels, um, you know, urban issues, and Brockton basically hit all the check marks. Have they given an extra penny for any of these check marks? No. Um, but yet our school system continues to improve, to provide these students with a quality education. When we attend the National Honor Society, it is so humbling because you see a diverse group of students and these students come from every walk of life. And many of these students have been in the system for uh, a handful of years and have come from different um, countries, and they prioritize their own education. They, pr they are provided with support uh, from our bilingual community and our bilingual department. And these students, as you all know, go to some of the finest schools. Um, one in particular last year is going to Harvard. I mean, the Brockton Public Schools knows how to educate kids. All we're looking for is basically the support that we need, the support that we deserve, um, and we, again, need to work together in order to provide support to our delegation in order to get the funding that our kids deserve and that uh, we know will be necessary for our kids to succeed. A big part of our bilingual department um, is the director of that department, and that is Kelly Jones. Kelly? Oh, hey. Hello. Hola. Bonjour. Ni hauma. Merhaba. And for any Slovaks in the house, ahoy. <laughs> My name is Kelly Jones, and I'm the proud director of bilingual department here in Brockton. Part of Brockton's success is the linguistic abilities that our students and families bring to our schools, the city, 
and the state. In, um, in a 2006 report entitled Education for Global Leadership, the Committee for Economic Development, CED, stated, quote, to confront the 21st century challenges that to our economy and national security, our education system must be strengthened to increase the foreign language skills um, and cultural awareness of our, cultural awareness of our students. <laughs> America's continued global leadership will depend on our students' abilities to interact with the world community, both inside and outside our borders, end quote. For college and career readiness, our students need to be proficient in other languages, regardless of whether they, want, they choose to transition directly to the workforce or to post-secondary education. Through its bilingual programs, through its two-way immersion program, through its UNIDOS program, through its medical interpretation program, through its IB programs, through its foreign language programs in, in uh, Chinese, Spanish, Latin, um, Brockton capitalizes on the linguistic assets of our communities and prepares students for the demands of the 21st century. Without adequate resources, these programs may be in jeopardy with long-term social, cognitive, and economic consequences. Brockton kids count, or as they say in Portuguese, clientes de Brockton contam. Thank you, obrigada, merci, gracias, and for the Slovaks, uh, de <laughs> Okay, so. Okay, well, we all know here at Brockton High School and in the Brockton Public Schools, uh, Athletic excellence is part of the word Brockton boxers. Uh, the, the boxers basically, when I was here, um, we were dominant in so many sports and we are still dominant, but it seems like the different sports we're involved with uh, are changing a little. Uh, we had a soccer team that is just off the charts recently. Um, we have um, a football team that always does very well. We have um, uh, girl sports teams that are just incredible. Um, so sports basically is a key component to that well-developed and well-rounded student. And um, as part of our sports uh, program, as part of our sports um, here at Brockton High School, we have a very special athletic director who also came from the middle school level. So it's, it's, it's nice that he has a relationship with a lot of students who have come up and are coming to Brockton High, and he has a perspective, a middle school perspective, in addition now to a high school perspective. And that basically is a nice, well-rounded um, experience that he can basically convey to our kids, which I think uh, is, is a huge value. Um, the person I'd like to introduce is Kevin Cairo, our athletic director. <laughs> Okay, good evening everybody and thank you for coming out tonight. I know a lot of you have busy schedules. And as Tom was saying earlier, I mean, we are the city of champions and if you have gone into our gymnasium, athletic tradition is something that is near and dear to this school and to this community. Okay, behind me is a picture of our senior athletes just after the fall season. And the thing that we're most impressed with up here, we have over 25% of our kids that come through our doors participating in some sport of, some sort of athletic program here, okay? And I think that that's really an important stat, that one out of every four kids takes advantage of the athletic program here. And our goal here is to provide them with opportunities and to provide them equipment and things that they can't get in the classroom and they can't get out with their AAU teams. It, it has to happen here. And one of my goals is to provide uniforms that we can be proud to wear. And in the couple of pictures that I'll show you here, I'll show you exactly what that means. There's something to be said about putting on a uniform that you're proud of, that represents your community, your school, your family, and yourself. And that's something that I want to continue here. And I think that we've done a great job. We've gotten off to a great start doing that. Um, 
And I just want to share with you right now just some of the highlights. And this is just a small snippet of wonderful things that have happened here. We've had 15 of our teams win big three championships. We've had over 10 of our athletic teams qualify for the state tournament three this week. With We have boys tennis. We have... Uh, baseball and boys volleyball all competing in the MIA tournament so great things are happening but we need your help to make this continue all right this gentleman right behind me Cole Wyman it's only a junior but Cole has done something simply incredible he's done something that nobody in the history of Brockton High School's done he's won the state wrestling title at 120 pounds two years in a row and he has one, hopefully will make it a three-peat next year. This is Jelani Jackson. Jelani was one of our girl basketball players, and she hit a milestone of 1,000 career points this past season. And this is one of those things where, yeah, it's just great. But this opened up a door for Jelani to go to UMass Boston next year. And that's what we're seeing is that this athletics opens up doors for kids. In this here, these are the four of the fastest guys in all of New England. We had a chance to send them in their talents down to New York City to compete in the New Balance Invitational. As you can see, this is what I was talking about, wearing Brockton proudly with a good looking uniform and that's something that we want to continue. And here's Rudy Ramos, fastest kid in the state of Massachusetts. Proudly showing off his Brockton jersey. Once again, I can't emphasize the importance that athletics plays in the life of our kids. Sports teaches lessons that aren't taught in the classroom. It talks about teamwork and working hard and overcoming um, defeat, learning from your mistakes, and all of those things that make this the City of Champions and our athletic, athletic program a beacon for others to follow. And we need your help to make sure that this tradition continues. So thank you. Okay, the next person up is uh, basically an icon in the City of Brockton. And that uh, is basically our music director, Vinnie Macrina. Mr. Macrina will tell you how music is another language, how it basically helps students form, form ideas and basically develop the brain in a way that only music can. And um, he lives it, breathes it, he's committed to it, and he will also tell you how important it is the younger these kids get involved with music, the better off they are. And the more they practice, 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 the you know, the better off they will be. So um, without any further ado, we have basically the best music director in, this, in, in the country, Vinnie McCrean. I should just go home after that, right? Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> I'll be very brief. And I... Uh, um, Mr. Kara spoke about the extras that uh, we offer here at Brockton High School, how important it is. But um, let me just, just start a couple of things. What, are these, what do these names and places have in common? St. Louis Symphony, Walt Disney, Singapore Symphony, Andrew Lloyd Webber, Broadway, Brian Setzer. Everything you hear, our students are performing in this area, which... This is um, what, what makes the difference of a school system. Now, I've been here for quite a few years, and but I've been director since 1986 when I had an opportunity to develop the program. And I myself, as an immigrant to this country, so the importance of something like music, yes, we did not have bilingual program, but my bilingual program was my father, who taught me to speak backwards, actually. Um, and the importance of grasping onto something, because not all kids are athletes, and some of the brilliant kids, as Obina, being able or not, who went to Harvard and got accepted to everything else, he was also a member of our band, and he'll still talk to you about that. But the important thing is, as one um, principal of a private school said to me, Mr. Macrina, 
you cost me a lot of good kids. Well, I'm sorry about that, I said. And it isn't because it's me, it's because it's what you people offer at Broughton High School is extra. We cannot accept you. These are all bright kids that could be going to other schools. And it isn't the athletics, I mean the, the academics here, because we got the best academics. It's the extra things that this school has always, and all the 45 years that I've been here, have watched and seen my area grow Unbelievable. We got students playing a major symphony. They got the foundation here. We had great athletes walk out here and they get great athletes. And we always have and we also have students go to Harvard University. They have the foundation. So I asked you one of my friends from Lexington keep on saying to me, my band director Jeff, how do you guys do it down here? How do you keep a program like yours going? You must have this no, I say. Number one, I got great kids. And number two, I says we got great administrators and great support from the community. And that's the important thing. A well-rounded education, it costs money, there's no question about it. And the sad thing about it, and I'll leave you with this, that this year, if things stay the way they are, we're not going to have an instrumental program in, in, in the elementaries or junior high, because all these teachers, they'd remain, I have to put them into the classroom. So that means all you people that went on and bought money and so on, we can't serve. I'll have two people left over, so which junior high do we do? So, and we have thousands of kids, not a couple, thousands of how many kids to serve. And music, we have to tell you, uh, Plato said a long time ago that within music, at least the keys to all learning. And you look at all the kids that come through a music program, you want your kids involved in something, it's, it's who they hang around with in this school and what they want to do, and that's a great area. So please, I know you heard this before, um, I've asked me to go other places many years ago, but I wouldn't go anyplace else. And this is the this is a great school. I've watched it. We put kids everywhere, and 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 this champion over here, it's unbelievable of what we have. You guys, we all have to do tomorrow. I will call up and do my part, and uh, I hope that everyone comes in and chips in because we have a great system, and 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 that's what's important, not only to us but also to the city and everything else. So get out there and tell them what we're all about. Thank you. We basically can't accept mediocrity because mediocrity is basically going to bring us to a place where we will not accept. Um, we're used to what we're used to here in Brockton. Um, our kids come first. We all want better for our kids than we had. And um, the music program is a huge part of that. Like Mr. Macrina said, um, there are plenty of students who do not get involved with sports. They have a different talent, a different interest. and. Um, Music is a very beautiful uh, interest, a, a very uh, wonderful hobby, uh, profession to some people, and uh, we cannot allow that to disappear. Um, an, another special uh, interest that some of our kids have is basically drama, and uh, many of us had the, uh, had the good luck and good fortune to witness a show that was, in my opinion, you know, at the collegiate level. It was uh, wonderful. And that show was recently uh, well done here at the high school, and it was called Sister Act. Um, we have so many, again, teachers here who are so committed to our students. Um, um, Matt Cumming Cunningham, who is the choral director, was involved in that, uh, in that show. Um, there were so many excellent voices in that show. Uh, there were so many singers who who could have played so many different parts. I, I was so impressed sitting there saying to myself, wow, it's not like we have just two or three really good singers. You could tell, they, they, they were over 20 kids that could have played leads and um, there were just so many kids that were doing a great job um, and, and I was just uh, stunned at how entertaining. I had to go at least twice. I went one night and I was like, oh, I wonder how this is gonna be because the year before it was extremely, uh, extremely well done. And after that first show, I'm like, I, I have to go again. I don't know which night I can go, but I have to go again. So um, I made it, luckily, and it was, uh, it, it, was, it was my good fortune to go a second time. Um, so uh, drama, music, choral, uh, these are some of the things that we have to preserve. We need for our kids. Uh, we can't allow them to be eliminated. We have to advocate for our kids and do what we need to do in order to step it up. 
Um, so a huge part of the drama department is Mr. Hogan, Bob Hogan. And um, I'd like to invite him up. He is our director of drama, and uh, you gotta love that jacket. You know, just loud and boisterous. It's a drama teacher. We have a special treat for us. So we have a special treat for you in um, a minute or so. We brought uh, a number from Sister Act uh, that we'd like to showcase to all of you tonight. Um, for those of you who don't know me, again, I'm Bob Hogan. I am the theater teacher and director uh, here at Brockton High School. Um, seeing, being a young boy, a student also from the Brockton Public Schools, I always wanted to be a teacher. I wanted to empower students, help them shape our society, and most importantly, make an impact in the world. I chose this profession because it's the most important profession in the world. What we do impacts the future, making the world a better place for everyone, no matter what job they have. I'm proud to say that Brockton High School is that comprehensive high school that has a great academic, great athletic, and great arts programs with course offerings that truly promote that well-rounded student that we've heard a lot of people talk about tonight. But as a theater educator, the arts have allowed us to have a hunger for creative activity. There's a book I'd like to quote, The Muse That Goes to School an inspiring book about the importance of theater in public school education. We see the arts as a vehicle for the discovery of the self, the development of self-discipline, cultural identity, hard work, commitment, and most importantly, the integrative force in learning with differentiated instruction. Isn't that what education is all about? I implore you to examine this system of Brockton and all of the amazing achievements that have been showcased and really think about how devastating this budget cut is to all of our programs in the Brockton Public Schools. As a student, resident, and now teacher in Brockton, I can't imagine wanting to take away something that is fundamentally the most important thing to our society, education. The arts, both performing and visual, help us understand each other and all our differences that we celebrate. We've just had the extre uh, extreme pleasure of putting on and performing Sister Act, which rocked the house for three nights, but was comprised of students, and this is what I'd like everybody to hear, from the theater, the chorus, the band, the visual arts program, the football team, the volleyball team, the track, and so many other programs. It was a collaboration of all facets of Brockton High School, a true culmination of the year. Brockton High School has the highest number of musical nominations to date since the inception of the MET Musical Awards in the state of Massachusetts in 2013 when it started. Brockton High School right now has 42 nominations, 14 wins, and most impressive, Best Musical in Massachusetts 2015 for Anything Goes, first in the state. Once a student, always a student. We stand together, Brockton kids count. So now, as the proud director of theater here at Brockton High School, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a little montage for you from our last show, Sister Act. Enjoy.
stage as a camera's adore me. Can't you see me at work in red carpets or doing TV? Can't you see all my millions of fans screaming desperately for me? And I'm a diva, a goddess, a star on the brink, a house rocking vision in a heart shocking pink, a party riot, the whole kitchen sink. It's time for the world to find out, don't you think? No, look at me, can't you see? I've got it's too hard to hide. I'll be fabulous, baby. So damn fabulous, baby. Fine and fabulous. Wait and see. I've got priests doing moves like Travolta. A communion somehow risque. People flailing their limbs, getting down with the hymns, while your sanctity dims day by day. And I don't have a clue what to do except grieve. Don't know in what or in whom to believe. Don't really know if it's true that you're even still there. So tell me, are you there? Raise your 
That was Olivia, Alexis, and Nikita. And that was the message of tonight, everybody. Raise your voice! Thank you so much. No, I'm not good.